What's up, everybody? It's Lexi D. Welcome back to Something to Consider. In this episode, I'm going to be walking you all through my experiences and my thoughts on the feeling of resentment. If you're like me, the first thing that you heard when I said that word was Beyonce's song, Resentment. (laughs) I am not going to try to even sing it, but that song, oh, beautiful. When I think of resentment, I think of a feeling of having put a lot, dare I say, you're all into a situation and then not receiving back what you would expect given how much you put into the situation. Pulling from my own life experiences, where this has shown up a lot has been in romantic relationships. This is where I have found myself lacking boundaries, having insecurities that drove me to behaviors that ultimately led me to feel resentment when the situations would unfold and would unravel. There's one situation in mind for me that I think about instantly when I think of the word or the feeling of resentment. And in that situation, I was in a situationship for two years. Just the fact that I'm naming that situation a situationship should tell you, if you're familiar with that word, the dynamic that was set up between this particular guy and I. It was quite unhealthy, it was toxic, and it led to a lot of resentment in the end. And when I look back on that situation and my actions and how I contributed, what I found is that I was trying my best to present myself in a way that this man would hopefully desire me enough to commit to me. And this is a thought process I have had to go to therapy for, I've talked with my friends about, I have discussed in my prayers to God, because I know it is something that is problematic. And even at the time, I think I suspected it was problematic, but I did not know how to break the cycle. He is not the first guy in which I would take that thought process through the relationship or through the situationship, really. He definitely was not the first guy. And I would find myself in this pattern of every time I would see what seemed to be a an eligible bachelor, if you will, I instantly would put that person on a pedestal, which if you put something on a pedestal automatically puts you beneath whatever that thing is. And I would do my best to try to be chosen. And this included suppressing parts of myself, tweaking and changing parts of myself to fit what I hoped that that person would desire. And at the end of these situations, I would find myself completely depleted. And in this particular situation with this guy, because it was the longest situation ship I had been in, there was this underlying cur- current that I didn't realize that was building up of resentment. Every time I got into or I re-engaged in contact with him, things would end more toxically. Is that a word? <laughs> they would end in a more toxic fashion than they had the previous time. And so it just became this culmination of anger, of frustration, of disappointment, of hurt and resentment that ensued until things, until I finally ended things. And it took me a few times to actually end things. And so when I think back to this feeling of resentment and the source of it, I think of it around... The fact of feeling like, or the feeling that I gave so much in the situation and my expectations weren't met. And there are so many things that come to mind when I think of that. 
first thing, it's nothing wrong, I think, to be a giving person, to want to show up as your best self in a relationship. The problem that can arise, though, if this is the problem that can arise or one of the problems that can arise is when it goes from wanting to show up as your best self to wanting to show up as what you think this person wants. And I had to learn the difference between those two things. The first thing of wanting to show up as my best, show up as my best self, that is something that happens regardless of the outcome, regardless if this person decides to be in a relationship or not with me, or even if I decide that I want to be in a relationship or not with them, I show up as my best versus the other thing is me trying to show up in a way to get this person to do something. And so that brings about this idea and this question of when we start giving things, whether it's giving actual things or giving time or giving energy, what I've learned about resentment is that when we feel like we are giving we are giving so much and that's not being met. We are giving from a place of expectation. And when we start giving from a place of expectation versus freely giving, if that expectation is not met, that's where the resentment comes in. Giving ideally is going to be from a space where it's being done on our own free will versus being done as a way to get someone to do something else. And also the other side of things is that this is where, and I've, I have had these feelings too, where someone has given something to me and I've almost been suspicious of what are they trying to get out of me? So people can sometimes feel when you're giving something and it's not from this genuine place. It actually reminds me of this episode in the office I don't remember the season or the episode and if you don't watch the office you may not catch this reference but what happened in that episode was Dwight was he had picked he had something to do with Jim like something that he wanted to get back at Jim and he bought bagels for everyone and I remember he handed out these bagels And after he handed out the bagels and everyone was saying, thank you, he's like, yeah, you owe me one, you owe me one, you owe me one. So he was not giving the bagels out because he just wanted people to be happy about it or excited about it. He was giving them out because he specifically had an expectation that they would do a favor for him in return. And so laid out like that, we can see this is problematic. And yet this is something that I found myself doing in this situationship. So much so that I found myself angry and I found myself entitled at times because I felt like I was giving, I was sacrificing. How dare this person not meet me in return? How dare this person not show up in the same way that I'm showing up? Why is it okay for them to do this, but but I have to do X, Y, Z? Like, why do they get to do A, B, C, and I can't do X? You know, that kind of thing. Another example that comes to mind when I was talking about this with a close friend of mine is when we find ourselves doing a sort of people-pleasing and we sacrifice ourselves in ways that we expect other people to sacrifice. And then when they don't, like, let's say, for instance, moving, someone asks you, hey, can you help me move? You have a whole bunch of other things to do that day. But in your mind, you're like, oh, I'll do this because, you know, if they were in my shoes, uh, then they would do that for me. And then the shoe gets turned around. The shoe gets put on the other foot. There we go. The shoe gets put on the other foot. And you ask this person, hey, can you help me move? And they're like, oh, no, I'm so sorry. I have things that I have to do. And then that can cause a sort of tension of like, well, wait a minute, I had things that I had to do, but I decided, you know, have you ever been in a situation like that where it's, it's such a, an odd feeling of like, I can't really describe it, but have you ever been in a situation like that where someone 
someone did something and then when you didn't act in the same way that they did, it was this frustration, this irritation, this sense of entitlement. And it leaves you on the receiving end just kind of like, huh? If you were busy, you could have just said that. So this starts going into the conversation around boundaries. Boundaries, I've learned, can be a way to prevent a feeling of resentment. But even more so to the point, create a feeling of peace, of of a peaceful dynamic between us and other people. People can't read our minds. They don't know what's going on. And I've had to learn that when people are asking something of me and I can't do it or I just don't want to do it, it is the onus is on me to be honest about that. And in most situations, I don't have to explain myself, just like other people don't have to explain themselves. Something is offered to me to do or asked of me to do, and I can say, no, I'm not available. And how that person responds is now an indicator of if they can respect your boundaries or not. It is okay, I think, for the other person to say, oh, I'm a little sad about that or disappointed about that. That's fine. But when they start getting angry, when they start using that against you, when it starts becoming this big issue, that's where we have a problem. And so in therapy, what I learned was around the responsibility I had in this situation with ship with this man, the, the responsibility that I was abandoning of taking care of my own needs and taking care of myself. And so when I found myself at the end of the situation ship, ultimately depleted, it's because I was not meeting my own needs. And also I was trying to meet what I felt to be a perceived need of which he didn't even ask. This is how we end up in situations where the other person says things like, I didn't even ask you to do that. I didn't even ask you, or if you didn't want to, you could have just said that. Not that he said those things, but I I look back on it and I'm like, I just was so freely giving of myself, but I was also giving of giving of myself in a way to try to hopefully manipulate this man's sense of me into choosing me. And so once I started to learn in therapy how to undo that and what the problems were with that. And I started learning about boundaries and I started setting those boundaries. It became an organic end to things with him. Like I said, at the start of this start of things, it took me a couple of tries and it was very much paralleling with my experience in therapy. But once I got to a certain point in therapy, I also got, got to a certain point with the situation with him, or even I got to a certain point with myself, which then brought me to a certain point in the situation ship with him to just end things. It became a no brainer. But to get to that point took a lot of work, a lot of unlearning of things that were not serving me and a lot of learning of things that did serve me. So something to consider for you all, if you have felt these feelings of resentment is to first look at in what way am I giving? What is the motivating factor or factors behind me giving? Is it because I am expecting that this person on the receiving end is going to do something? And also something I want to be clear about as well and to add. When we do give things, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that we should give And this person, if they're rude to us or just disrespectful, that we should tolerate that. That's not at all what I'm saying. But what I am saying is to consider the source of our giving if we are finding that we are resentful. Because from my perspective, they are directly tied to one another. And if you are finding that that source of giving is because you're expecting something from this other person, 
consider shifting that. Consider not giving anymore until you can recalibrate to give from a freeing place. And that might cause you to reassess the relationship entirely. If the relationship was built on this foundation of you being the giver, of you being the one who's initiating, of you any kind of relationship, not just romantic relationship, then you may find that when you stop doing these things, the relationship may no longer exist. And that may bring about other conversations or a conversation around how much energy you put into the relationship. So with that, I hope I gave you all some things to consider and think about. I will talk to you all in my next one.